I am strictly teen anti-hustle culture. I think that romanticizing the hustle while working your fingers to the bone is A, no way to live, and B, not a very sustainable way to create financial security for your future. I do believe in the saying that you need to be in the game to play it, however. And so in this video, I am sharing five tips that I learned to set up a sustainable side hustle so that you can stick with it for the long term. That is, keep working at it consistently without burning out so that you can gain momentum and succeed over the long term. So some of these tips I got right straight off the bat. Others I learned the hard way. But regardless, these are all things that I apply to my various side projects at the moment and they're working for where I am at now and they might help you stay on track for the long term too. I've started a bunch of different side projects over the last few years to varying degrees of success and what I've noticed is that the similar pattern plays out over and over again. I start out really really excited, I give it my all for the first month or two and then I get tired. And then I get disappointed in myself in the process and eventually I get really demotivated and everything just becomes so much harder. And so that's my first tip. Your side hustle might take longer to gain momentum than you initially expected. Taking this attitude, you might find really fast success, in which case you'll be pleasantly surprised. If you go in with your eyes open and it does take a little bit longer, then you don't have to get stuck in the same cycle that I did because you know that it's all part of the process. It's not you doing something wrong. It's just that this takes time. There are ups and downs during the journey. Optimism bias is a psychological theory that says that all of us believe that we are more likely to have success than other people in a similar situation regardless of the probability. If you recognize optimism bias right from the beginning, it is much easier to put the following steps in place. My second tip, at the beginning of your side hustle journey, focus on progress goals rather than outcome goals. Progress goals are usually actions relating to things that you have direct control over. For example, this could be, I will publish four blog posts a month, or I commit to spending one hour a week on prospecting for new freelance clients. On the contrary, outcome goals are usually things that you cannot directly control, like traffic to your online shop or converted clients. I point this out because at the beginning of the journey, you have a lot less control over outcomes than you do over your individual actions. So for example, you might commit to sending out these prospecting emails to find new freelance clients, but you have no way to guarantee that those clients will convert into paying customers and ditto for things like your traffic. This channel, for example, is a real little baby still, and I focus my energy on consistency rather than outcomes. I commit to publishing a certain number of videos a month, but I can't guarantee that each video is going to translate into a certain number of subscribers or views. On that note, please subscribe to my channel, like this video if you're enjoying it, and thank you for watching. My third tip, don't overcommit to your side hustle. Traditional online hustle culture tells you that you need to work harder than anybody else to have success. And that attitude will definitely work for some people sometimes. Getting up earlier than everybody else and using those extra few hours to work on your side hustle is obviously going to help you move the dial. But that same logic can make it very tempting at the beginning to just throw everything you have at working on your side hustle. And the risk there is that you sacrifice friends, you sacrifice rest, you sacrifice exercise, all these things that make a semi-balanced life in the name of your side hustle. And I know from experience that this enthusiastic attitude can sometimes backfire to the degree that you are exhausted, you no longer have good ideas, you're not motivated, and you end up stopping, you lose momentum as a result. To combat this, I take at least one day off a week where I am not working on my nine to five job, I am not working on my side hustle projects, I'm just chilling. And that is good for my mental health, but it's also really good for my projects because it means that I have more mental energy to bring to the table. I have better ideas. I'm more able to view things with perspective. And over the long term, that to me feels more important. It feels more productive and more effective than just desperately working away until 3 a.m. every day. I just mentioned my nine to five job and I wanted to say here that I will be forever grateful for learning the value of processes from my tech job. Because if we're saying that working harder isn't the answer, 
working smarter might be. And this is my tip number four, which is to create systems and processes as soon as you can. The productivity gurus really love this one, and so do I, because creating a order of operations or a system for doing things saves a lot of time and it gives you a lot of clarity. So this could apply to anything from your process for invoicing your freelance clients to generating new ideas for your email. An example could be if you are running an online shop Instead of uploading individual product descriptions each time you create a new product, you can batch the task. You would have five new products, you write five new descriptions all at the same time, you upload them in bulk, and that's going to save you time clicking around and switching between tasks. When it comes to something like idea generation, a tiny little process improvement could be keeping a notebook or a Google Doc open so that you can write down your ideas as you have them. This will save you time when you sit down to actually create. Because I always like to keep it real, I want to point out that you probably aren't going to come up with the perfect process straight away, particularly if you have no idea what you're doing, which is a potential situation if you're just starting out. The idea with this point of thinking about processes straight away is to be aware from the beginning. So as you are completing tasks, always take a little moment to look back and think, is there a way that I could have improved that, that process? What would have made that feel better, what could have saved me time, how would I do it differently next time? And then as you get more experience, start to apply a process. We're on to my final tip, which is tip number five. Beware the illusion of control. This is a psychological tendency to assume that we have more control over events than we actually do. It's relevant to the specific goals that we set ourselves, which I mentioned in point two about progress versus outcome goals but it is also relevant to your side hustle as a whole because there are very few things that you can do in your side hustle where it is 100% certain that that action will pay off. So you need to approach it with a open mind and a growth mindset so that you can maintain your optimism when times get a bit bumpy. It's also really important for me that I check in that I'm still enjoying the process and that it still feels worthwhile. So yeah, just accept that some things are going to go awry. That is basically a guarantee and you probably won't be able to predict what they are. Generally, you want to be able to channel your grit so that you can keep going because that's what you need if you ultimately want to have success with your side hustle and on that note thank you so much for watching in my case it is your time and your attention and sometimes your comments that really keep me going so yeah thanks for that and i will see you in the next video